song are we starting with? What song are we starting with? Uh, he knows my name. All right. He knows my name. All right, guys, we're going to start on the worship service. And while we wait until everybody comes. All right, let's pray. Let's pray a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for this beautiful day. You have given us and for the opportunity to always bring us here to your place of worship, Father God. Um, we dedicate these songs to you so that you can be lift, lifted up uh, the same way as that we want to be connected to you through these songs and through this worship. And Father God, send your Holy Spirit, send your holy angels be among us, Father God. Be with those who are on their way. I ask this in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Alright, I have a maker. It's a beautiful song. Um, so let's sing with our hearts.
so that we can get an idea of what the lesson is talking about. And also, you can read that um, Bible verse to me, please. Si puedes. Acts what? Uh, Acts 20, 24. Uh-huh. Can you read it for me? Pero de ninguna cosa hago caso, ni estimo preciosa mi vida para mí mismo. Con tal que acabe mi carrera con gozo y el ministerio que recibí del Señor Jesús para dar solemne testimonio del Evangelio de la gracia de Dios. Acts 20, 24. 23. Yeah, that was it. Oh, 24, 24, 24. 24. Cool. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I have it in English. Can you read it in English too, please? Yes. So, I do not count my life of any value to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. Yeah. Well, it's, it's rather interesting um, how what Paul says here in this in this um, in this verse um, because he's saying that he rather finish the, what do you say? It says, if I only may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify the good news of the God's grace. So, so he's basically saying that he wants to finish the ministry and that his life will be what? And what I understood Go ahead, go ahead. Is that it would be more of value to him to finish 
for his ministry with Jesus than his own life. And what do you think is that? Like, like you, you see, you see. I don't, I'm not sure how much you know about Paul's life and, and his ministry, but what do you think he's doing at this point in the, in Acts? Because remember, he wrote other uh, Bible uh, books such as such as Galatians and Romans. But what do you think he's doing at this point? Like, or what is your image of Paul? Uh, doing at this point in, 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 in Acts. Do you have an image? I don't know what um, Paul is doing. You have to have something like. Like what he's doing? Mm -hmm. What do you think? What's the image of, of Paul? Why? He, is he like saying a speech or something? Okay. Is he, is he like. Um, yeah, he's he saying goodbye to um, goodbye to the people of Milet. So I'm gonna read a little bit of what, what they say here. It says, "Looks like how to of Paul's third journey starts rather abruptly." The text says only that after spending some time in Antioch, the center of Paul's missions. The apostles set out on another journey, passing successively through the region of Galatian Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Acts 18:23. 20, um, uh, so the first 1,500 miles of the journey are covered in one sentence. Right? This is because the focal point of the journey was Ephesus, where Paul spent more time than any in, in, than in any other city of the course of his journeys. From the evangelistic standpoint, the ministry in Ephesus was very fruitful. The impact of Paul's preaching reached the full province of Asia. It was probably during this time that the churches of the Colo Colos Colossia, Hierapolis, and Laodicea were founded, perhaps through the Epaphras, one of the Paschal workers. Now, let's go to, uh, uh, where is it at? Acts 19. And let's read the first 10 verses and, and kind of understand, actually, hold on. Let's read 24 to 28. 18, actually, hold on. 18, uh, Acts 18, 24 to 28. Somebody can read it for me. Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. Oh, there's more, sorry. Keep on going? Yeah, sorry, it's loading. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Though he knew only the baptism of John, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And, we, and when he wished to cross to Achaia, uh, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who through grace had believed, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public and showing the, by the scriptures that the Christ was Jesus. Okay. So who, who, who does the Bible says he is? Apollos? A Jew. It says that he was very, like, um, he knew a lot about scripture. Yeah. He was a person that knew everything, like, he was very aware of who Jesus is and what the ministry was all about. It says, uh, now a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, and other men in my name, scriptures, and the Are you supposed to give the lesson? Okay, it's your turn. Continue if you're... No, I don't I just study the lesson. I'm just, I'm oh, just going just, by... Did you study it? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, we have this in person class. here, so... Put it in your class. All right, I'm going to leave it up to you. <laughs> okay, thank you, John. Thank you. Can you help me with the PowerPoint? Where's our result? Uh, you have to turn it off. Thanks for 
Oh, bring while you set up, I guess I can. Alright. So let's read um, Acts 19. Uh, 1 through 7. Elisa, can you help us out with that, please? 19. 1 through 7. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road to the interior and arrived at a kingdom. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Wow. There were about 12 men in all. Whoa. That's very powerful, huh? So, what happened, what happened uh, before um, Jesus was dead? Like, how were people being baptized? Through uh, John the Baptist? Yeah, through the John the Baptist. But there's something interesting that uh, Paul mentions here, because he asked them, right? Like, why did he ask them? If they didn't, if they baptized and received the uh, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Yeah, so he said, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. But then what happened? Like, he realized that they were baptizing what? In uh, baptism. So, yeah, so it says in verse 4, Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance. Right? Saying to the people that they should believe in him, on him who would come after him, that is on Jesus Christ. So people were baptized in what? Baptism of repentance. The repentance. To believe in who? In Jesus Christ. They're on, in the one that was coming after him. Oh, yeah, and... Jesus had, had not come yet. Right. Because remember, it was... I think I think John, ba John the Baptist comes into Scripture at the same time that Jesus' ministry started. Right? Yeah, because John baptizes Jesus, no? Yes. Yeah. As the Scriptures were saying. So, so all these people that were baptized by John the Baptist um, were baptized in the press. He was basically telling them, hey... You guys need to repent because the one that is coming after me is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, right? So, so it's very interesting how these things work. And then what happened? What did Paul do? What did Paul do? Huh? He placed his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came on them. I think he baptized them too, right? Well, it says, uh, it says, habiéndoles, oh, okay, you're right. Las manos, uh -huh. Vino sobre ellos el Espíritu Santo y hablaban en lenguas y profe profetizaban. Right. So what was the whole purpose of baptism then? For repentance or what? No, what's the whole purpose? Like what happened? Because remember he says, and when Paul ha had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came up on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Right? And then on verse 2, he says, He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Right? So, so the baptism is, is when you come down and believe. Right? You believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior. And what happens as a consequence of that? What happens? Paul, Paul is saying it. You receive the Holy Spirit? You receive the Holy Spirit. And then what happened when he laid his hands on them? They spoke in tongues. That's why the Pentecost um, believe that uh, speaking in tongues. That's why they when you uh, when you go to the churches like the Pentecost, they'll be uh, uh, speaking in tongues and stuff like that. And my co-worker said that uh, she speaks in tongues. And uh, and uh, I told her, uh, and she said, did you receive the, the speaking in tongues already? And I said, no, nah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I know it happened in the Word, but uh, I don't 
think uh, it's uh, you know maybe so from what they get from this verse is that when you get baptized you're gonna speak in tongues like that's mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, well, it's it's a very controversial topic, um, but I think what it comes down is that uh, the Holy Spirit changes you in the sense that uh, once you accepted Jesus as the one that forgives you from your sins, you will stop doing. Sin, like sin as in you, let me take that back. Your desire to follow Jesus will be much greater than to do sin. You will still commit sin, but you will know that, that that's not the right way. But the Holy Spirit will be with you to remind you, hey, you know, this is not right, this is not right. You'll be convicted. You'll be convicted. Or you'll you'll, you'll exactly. have that little so, voice say, so, you know, what, what are you doing and stuff like that. You'll feel remorse. Or repentance. No, repentance is when oh. you actually. Ah, what do I know? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good though. No, no, you feel convicted. So, so in this case, what, 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 you know, the true acceptance of the Holy Spirit is when you actually come and speak in tongues. And speaking tongues is, is like it's very, um, it's it's something that I, I guess we have never experienced, and we still yet have to see it personally. Because uh, remember, these were people that walked with Jesus, right? And um, and nowadays we still have to walk with Jesus. That's that's what it's trying to say. So I'm gonna leave that hand in mind. Uh, to, well, I think in this situation, Bernie. sorry, Bernie. I think in this particular situation, uh, they spoke in tongues because that was that was was necessary for the uh, word to continue to be. Um, spread out, spread out to the world, right? That's what I think. Um, so that happened because it was necessary for the gospel to keep uh, spreading uh, to different um, uh, uh, languages and stuff like that. But now we have Google Translate and stuff like that. So, <laughs> and we, uh, no. <laughs> what do you think, Bernard? Because I was, I was thinking, like, it, it's a gift. If it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, but if I don't understand what what the person is saying, if they're it's like if it's just like blabber, and they don't even know what they're saying, then how is that uh, a blessing to anybody? Bernard, it's all yours. Sorry, I'm gonna start from like the beginning. Cause, but thanks for at least at least they'll be Okay, can we get in the? Did everybody talk about how they leave when? Alright, let's start there. But, but it's also interesting that, um, you know, talking about you know, when you get baptized, you, you see the Holy Spirit, and, and like you were saying, you start uh, you know, being convicted or, or, or uh, feeling that you've done, that you're doing wrong and you're in sin. But a lot of people get baptized because they know they're in sin. So they already know that they are, you know what I mean? They've already been convicted. That they already feel that, that they know they're wrong. And, that they're sinning. Right. So that's how they gave access. I, I think it, it's a sense of when you when you are in a state of, of guilt, you you want to get out of there. And you know that there's nothing or no one that can forgive you, right? But when you get the message and understand that it's not about this far, it's not about the people, it's about God and you and that God forgives your sins. Uh, and then you can be forgiven, then, then, then you want that. Then that's when you accept that forgiveness and know that you can be forgiven despite of all of your sins. And that's what a lot of people do. They get baptized because they understand that it's not about here on earth, that there's more than, 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 than this. So, so I think that's why people get baptized and they're convicted that 
that God will forgive him and will give him a new heart. And that's why people change. So maybe the, uh, uh, the, the, the baptism of, of the Holy Spirit happens before you get actually baptized. Physically. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, if that's the baptism, like on the American, that's a symbol. That's a symbol of you're repenting. Yeah. But you the but you already been baptized by the Holy Spirit before that because you already feel convicted. Because remember what Paul said. Remember what Paul said. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? When you got up, mm -hmm. remember that's what he asked him. He said, No, we have never heard this observation thing. Yeah. Um, and so and so I think that's what happens when you actually accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, then the Holy Spirit will come in you. And, 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 that's, and that's when, when, when you, know, you begin to walk in with Christ. I think that's what it is. That, that's what Paul's saying. You know? and, then, and then he put his hands on them and he, you know, he asked for the Holy Spirit. I think, that's just, I think that's just what's happening. And it happened the same thing with Jesus when he was baptized by by John the Baptist, Holy Spirit came in to him as a form of one. Adult, right? So, I think that's what it is. I think that's what happens when you actually truly, truly accept Jesus. Okay, all right. Uh, sorry to deviate from, from the conversation. It was getting deep. It was getting really deep. Very good. Um, but, but, we usually like to start with um, you know, how you guys' weeks went, and if you have anything to share, uh, that'd be cool if you guys want to start. Well, I'm not going to school this semester, so it was very kind of like, besides, um, oh, and my birthday's coming up next week. So I'm going to play and stuff Are you partying? No, just like, Several little plans. Am I, are we involved? <laughs> 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 Sounds like we have a, we'll a lot of <laughs> opportunities to be involved. No, but. Look at that, Well, I started um, school last week. Um, <clears throat> I had a little stress, I guess. I thought it was cool. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like the, like, the basic yeah. level of stress. And then, Goes higher when it's test and comes back down to the normal stress. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know what else I've done this week. Because I was working with my school, but I was getting in front of my school while I was rolling this week. So it's been fun. Um, there's a 
there's only allowed three visits per per Saturday per per day. So visits are only Saturdays and Sundays, and it's only allowed two of those visits. Oh. So three people can go. Um, I know this weekend is already. It's starting. Yeah, it's already taken mm -hmm. over, but he still has about the following weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so if you guys want to go, um, mm -hmm. I'm actually going tomorrow, and if. I was wondering if you guys wanted to write something. Yeah. I can take letters to him. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. I can't physically give them to him, but he can read them um, oh. off oh, yeah. the glass. Yeah. Oh. So, like, if you guys, even if you just get a paper, just write, you know, yeah. just a, a Bible verse of encouragement. He needs a lot of encouragement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he's doing okay. Um, he, I went to his court of uh, parents on Wednesday. And he is doing okay. Um, you know, just it's hard to yeah, cool. So who wants to be there? You know, but he's doing okay. And he's always asking about you guys and asking you know for you guys to pray. And he wants to come back. I was like, you already have a position for you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so be ready when you're out. <laughs> I'm like, you're gonna be the youth leader assistant. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. So it's been nice, you know, being able to talk to him. You know, mostly just giving him. Um, encouraging words because that's what he needs, and you know, so if you guys can do that, you know, today just write so You're giving this in tomorrow? Tomorrow. So you need those letters by tonight? By today. Well, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Are you coming tonight? tonight? Yeah, it's my fault that It's all okay. right here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you guys could write something, you know, just encouraging him, he would really appreciate it. Of course. Okay. Um, great to see you. <laughs> thank you. It's good to see all of you also. Um, so I just feel like um, God really wants me to share this. Um, so I know that, um, like from experience, I've seen that God uses um, any of like your negative experiences. Like if something bad happens, like He's always gonna try and um, He's that voice um, in your head that um, He um, He wants you to always use the negative, like um, not focus on the negative. You take the positive out of that. And um, so like, for example, with me, I was struggling, um, trying to choose like what career I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like, um, I was, um, I was like, oh, should I choose something that has to do with money or something that I like? Um, and I come to realize that it's not about, it's not um, about money. Like, um, I know you guys know that, um, or if you don't, then um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just I want to say something, but um, it's just like I'm nervous, but um. Actually, um, I noticed that um, like the abilities and the skills that God gives you, um, He gave you those for a reason, and um, I was thinking like, oh, um, you have to. Um, I thought like for myself, oh. Um, you're gonna be um good if you if you if you separate yourself and it's only you and God and God doesn't want you to do that. Like God puts you in a certain place because that's where He wants you to grow and that's um you're like the the connection to uh, people. You're gonna help people and if you run away, like how are you gonna do what God wants you to do? Yeah, that's a little bit of well, um like what God um, allowed me to learn this week. Awesome. Good. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Oh, uh, yes, I have. I had a good week. I also started school last week. Um, everything's going very well. Um, I joined a few clubs, so it'll be fun. And yeah, I'm very thankful. Oh, next week my boyfriend will be here. Aww. <laughs> So her name is Daisy Valdez. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just for next Saturday? Daisy Valdez. Yeah, that's a good one. That's the last thing I can get back. Thanks to you. My week was good. Um, uh, second week of school. Mm -hmm. It's going good. Um, a little stressful, but oh, it's good. Sure. I almost had a quiz. That I was not prepared for. <laughs> they had it for next week, so I that. That's good. Yeah. All right. But ahora sí estudia. Yeah. <laughs>
so I expect that every week. Yeah. That's funny. John? Um, my week was good. Uh, a lot of challenges. A challenge? A lot of challenges. I work in. Um, but it's been good. I've learned a lot. Oh, and you welcome John, I think. Yeah. You like the type of music. Yeah, that's what makes you who you are. Yeah. And thank God, you know, because of those challenges, it makes me see things in from a different perspective, at least from my career perspective. So I like that. Cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was good. And I'm um, glad it's over. And um, glad to be here. And glad everyone's here. And, um,
So what is what is this? This is a modern day. No, this is what the Jesus used to look like. So Paul, Paul um, was driven to go and to go to this city. This city back then was like um, New York is today, or Beijing, or Tokyo. A lot of um, you know activity, very populated. But the thing that um, drove Paul to go to this city is there was a lot of uh, idolatry going on in the city. So um, Paul wanted to change that. He wanted to make people see that um, what they're doing is wrong, but they should convert to God. That's what it looks like. So my question to you guys is, um, a lot of times when we're doing um, spreading the gospel, Cuando estamos um, hablando de otros en la palabra de Dios, se nos meten muchas cosas que, que nos, que nos, que nos paran. ¿no? A lot of things stop us. Um, but what compels us to keep going? That's what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say. So that's this one. So it's, uh, if I'm asking you guys, um, why, why would you want to serve God? And you tell me, I'm not going to go door to door and, and have hand out you know magazines or uh, give Bible studies because I'm I'm introverted or because I have a busy life. Um, what 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 would compel you? Like Paul was compelled. He left his home. He went to a city that was dangerous. He he was about to be persecuted by um, the was he a king? Was Artemis a king? Is there? He was the, the leader of um, the thesis. Artemis wanted everything. He wanted to be worshipped. It was all about idolatry. But what what's stopping us from, from doing what Paul did? You know, are we? Is it a busy life that we have? You know, we have work. We have a lot of things that we can't seem to fit in working for God anywhere in there. We don't want to add another. You know sticker on our face, so we just kind of put it to the end. Or maybe we're introverted. You know, maybe we'll say, oh, that person can handle it, I'll, I'll do something else. Or maybe we're scared. Maybe we're thinking, uh, if I go out with this message, you know, people are either going to criticize me, I might get hurt emotionally, physically. Do you think all these things worry Paul? Do you think uh, he faced bigger challenges? Yeah. What kind of challenges? A false prophets. I think that was one of the biggest ones. False prophets? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there were riots. He started riots. When he tried to plant churches, people would actually imagine getting riots. Have you guys ever been to a, uh, what, you know, uh, what people hold up signs and Protesters. Protesters that you guys were going to? Yeah. Remember the one that happened, um, I think it was in Virginia, where they ran over the, the, uh, that crowd? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was intense. Imagine something like that. Mm -hmm. All because they're trying to spread the word of God. But what? But he, but he did it anyway. He did it anyway. He, he said, I'm, I'm not going to let these things stop me. I'm going to do it anyway. So, but what compelled them to do that? So I want you guys to open up your, your Bibles. Um, and we're going to see how um, God had his back so much when he was out there preaching the word. Mm -hmm. Acts 20, 7 to 12. Now you can read it from here too. Hasta la medianoche. Seven to one. 
Um, 12. Y había muchas lámparas en el aposento alto donde estaban reunidos. Y un joven llamado Eutico que estaba sentado en la ventana, prendido de un sueño profundo por cuanto Pablo alargaba su discurso, vencido del sueño, cayó del tercer piso abajo y fue levantado muerto. Y da el entonces descendió Pablo y se echó sobre él y abrazando le dijo, no os alarméis, pues está vivo. Después de haber subido y partido el pan y comido, habló largamente hasta el alba y así salió. Y llevaron al joven vivo y fueron grandemente consolados. So, this gives us a, a very good picture of what God can do when you're out there preaching the word, when you're out there working for him. Imagine going into a situation like, like him, trusting God that much, that you say, oh, don't be worried. Even when a man you know, fell from, who knows how high that was, he's on the ground, he looks like he's dead. He's like, don't worry, God has this. I'm here working for God. So do we trust God that much that we go out there and, and, and to, uh, you know, preaching his word in different situations, difficult, scary situations? Do we trust God in that much? How do we do that? How, how we practice that or are we kind of, you know, keeping to ourselves? God is asking us to, to do that. And he uses this, the, he shows us this story to illustrate that no, I'm going to be with you. God has said, I'm going to be with you. So share, share with me. What, why would you want to serve God in this way? Spreading the gospel. And anyway, I put some examples on them. Because you're grateful? Is it because you're commanded to? For, I think for, uh, in my opinion, uh, just, uh, you know, if, uh, for, so Jesus, so Jesus um, can return, you know, fast. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh, you know, if, if uh, the whole world knows, then he can uh, return, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the there's, there's anxious one reason to go. Anybody else? Why, why would you want to serve God? Despite all these horrible things that could happen, why would you want to serve God? Do we go out there? Or like when we go um, give out um, the word or we go to like Home Depot and, and um, see the workers there and try to let them know about God? Do we have that in our minds? Or do we just go to this? Um, I was asked to do it. So is there an urgency to sharing the gospel? Yeah, there is. There should be. There should be an urgency. Okay. Um, somebody read Matthew 24, 4 to 12. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives me. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase in wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what Jonathan and Oscar were saying. So there is a, there's an urgency to spreading the gospel. There will be false prophets, but the more we do it, the more, the more likely uh, or the quicker God is going to return. Now this, this, this one here caught me off, off guard here. Is there a requirement from God to share the gospel? Yeah. I would agree too. Let's read Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Am 
Mateo 28, 18, 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And I am with you always, even at the end of the age. Amen. Amen. So, if we have so three, twenty, two people. So we're born, right? We start off. Somebody tells us, all right, you got to share the gospel. All right, well, let's start from the beginning. Um, we just read three different reasons, right? Three different reasons of why we should and the fact that God's going to do with us. So God, um, Oscar represents um, a command. God is saying, what, is, what, is, what did we just read? Um, make disciples. Make disciples of all nations, right? Baptizing the whole. So now we know, yeah, we have to. God is commanding us to. Right? Now, I'm representing something else. I'm representing the fact that uh, there's an urgency to do it. There's an urgency. What's that urgency? The God is, is on his way. Yeah, the God is on his way. We have to, we have to do this um, in the way that we have to put it as a priority. You know, you know how you make a list? But I'm going to do 1 to 10 today. I should do laundry first because I don't want to close it close tomorrow. Or, and on the bottom, you'll have like, I don't know, watch TV or watch something. You know, it'll be like a long list. So this would be like a priority because of that. Now, John here represents the fact that God is saying he's going to be with us. So we have no excuse. We have no excuse to say, I'm too afraid, I don't have time, or I'm going to be um, persecuted or something like that. Um, he represents that God is going to be with us here every step. Does that make sense? Does that make sense from start to finish? Why this is like the main, main thing why Paul decided to do this? And facing um, you know, his life as a nature. Our lives, um, not right now, we're living in a time where, you know, if you were to go to like the Middle East, you know, your life would probably more, be more in danger compared to, we try to spread the gospel compared to here. But um, we're very fortunate that. We can actually do it from our very own home now, using uh, social media and stuff like that. Um, but in his time, he had to be up there face to face. You know? So I think it's important that we go back to, to that time. I think I make more of an impact if I were to speak with um, God face to face than if I was to send her a message about, about the Lord God. So keep, keep us in mind, not us as people, like not. Don't think of Oscar and me and John when you're doing this, but keep up, keep those three things in mind. So there, there's there's a commandment, there's an urgency, and there's a relief that God's going to be with you. All three, all three, not not physically us, but all three. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying all three. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Amen. Amen. You want to do the final prayer? Yeah, let's finish with it. Can we hold hands? We shall. Okay. Okay, the project is in the same thing. Si sabemos que usted nos ha dado un propósito especial. Sabemos que es difícil en nuestros días, especialmente cuando estamos, nos sentimos ocupados, cuando nos sentimos con miedo o introvertidos. Um, sí, pero te queremos poner en primer lugar en cada uh, situación, en cada parte de nuestras vidas. Y vas a recordar ese mensaje, tal como hiciste con, con Pablo, y vamos a, a seguir adelante sin miedo y confiando en ti solamente. Uh, 
we thank you, God, for, for this wonderful week. We thank you for everybody that's here for this message. Um, and as we leave, uh, help us not to leave this message here, but take it with us wherever we go. Um, and spread your word for your soon coming. Um, there's a lot of signs right now showing us that you are on your way, and that you have told us the future, and um, this is it's never been more urgent than it is now. Um, so help us to be create, courageous and stay with us. In your name pray. Amen. 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 Amen.